Yeah, yeah, I know. I said I'd be in hiatus for the holidays, but I felt like ranting today, so, you know, screw the hiatus, I'm going to do a part now. And since this area doesn't lend itself well to LP commentary, well, why not? So what I'm gonna talk about today is the Speed Gamers Pokemon Marathon. You might have heard of it, you might have not, but I'm here to tell you everything that happened. Well, not everything, since I missed huge chunks of it. The thing, well, it was supposed to last 72 hours, but in the end they extended it for various reasons. And it lasted 87, 88 hours. And yeah, their purpose was uh, to both try and catch every Pokemon uh, among the, the first 491 ones, that would be all of them except for Shaman and Arceus, and raise money for Act Today, which is a charity that uh, basically helps take the fight to autism. Now, did they succeed or not? Well, they did not catch every Pokemon, unfortunately. They caught, I think it was 428, maybe 430. I heard a few different numbers, but I think it was 428. And yet there were several Pokemon that they didn't even make attempts at capturing. I'm thinking of Feebas and Milotic. Those two alone would have taken a tremendous amount of man hours, so it's no wonder no one bothered with them. But they did succeed in collecting the $5,000 that was their target. In fact, they collected almost $6,000 for Act Today. And that's the most important thing. Well, that and managed to keep an entire show entertaining for 87 hours, which they managed to do, actually. And there were a lot of things that happened during this, um, during this uh, marathon. And putting aside the, the, the crazy antics the commentators were involved in, I mean, there was a commentator that started doing barrel rolls on the floor as a response to, well, certain donations that, uh, that were made. But as for the games themselves, there was a lot of crazy stuff going on, and it was enhanced by the equally crazy chat room, which, well, it was unbelievably fast. There were messages that wouldn't even stay a whole second on the screen. It was that fast. But you could still get a pretty good idea of what was going on if you just skimmed through a few messages, since a lot of them were saying the same thing. But, uh, where do I begin? Might as well begin by telling you that I'm going to the ninth floor to unlock that, uh, that rest area. And, um, yeah, there, there, there's a trainer. No, I don't have to fight it. I was sure I had to fight that trainer in order to get there. But, whatever, where do I begin? Oh, yeah, the Wingall, of course, the Wingall. Yeah, there was a level 6 Wingall who was most likely... Hey! How did I get in there the first time? I, I don't get it. I got in, didn't have to fight that guy, and now I'm getting out and I have to fight him? And as for the Rocket Brothers, I think that was some sort of lame attempt by Game Freak at making this thing interesting, because, well, you could think, hey, maybe if I beat all four of them, I'll get something. No, you get nothing. Nothing but the satisfaction of beating four brothers, all at once, oh yeah. So yeah, that level 6 Wingall, which was likely used as an HM slave, well, the thing is, the guy who played Ruby was fighting Groudon, and his other five Pokemon got wiped out, so it was up to that Wingall to save the day, and of course, it was only one chance to capture the Groudon, so the, the guy had to make it count, and he chucks the Ultra Ball, and Groudon stays in. So the chat room goes absolutely berserk! Yeah, Wingo! 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 And of course, as you can't spell Wingo without win, there were a lot of puns made, but yeah, Wingo also played a major part in Rayquaza's capture, well, Apparently, the proper way to pronounce it is Rayquaza, but I've pronounced it Rayquaza for years, and even those guys pronounced it Rayquaza, so whatever. As far as I'm concerned, it's Rayquaza. 
But before I mention the, the actual fight against Rayquaza, I might as well tell you about how hard it was to get there. You know how in Sky Pillar there are those floors with cracks in them that if you stop on them with your magbipe, you go through? Well, the guy was playing it with a the, with a with a Game Boy play Game Boy Advance player on the GameCube, and the joystick, of course, wasn't very good for such a precision uh, thing. So yeah, he also tried with the D-pad, but we all know how absolutely ass the D-pad of the GameCube is. So he just couldn't get up. It took three hours just to get up to Rayquaza, and it took three other hours on top of that to actually capture the damn thing. Now where the wing all comes in was that Rayquaza kept su kept suiciding uh, because of outrage induced confusion. So, and several times this happened, it was the wing all that was up against Rayquaza. So every time the, the Rayquaza uh, committed suicide, well, you could imagine that the the, the the crowd in the in the chat room went even more berserk with each time that that Wingull technically got the kill on Rayquaza and it took so long that at one point they decided to auction the the, the nickname for Rayquaza. Now they did so for several several legendaries, but Rayquaza took so long that that some one guy. Donate, it was of course auctions in terms of donations to the cause, but one guy donated $400 to, in order to get the, the Rayquaza nicknamed after him. The guy's name was Chi Hansen. How could I forget that name? They said it so many times. That Chi Hansen guy was pretty much the star of the show, even though he was. Uh, just some guy on the chat room technically but yeah he donated four hundred dollars beating out another guy who donated three hundred and fifty dollars for absolutely nothing in the end but so did Chi Hansen in the end because the next morning the ruby file got corrupted I'm not kidding the Groudon the Rayquaza nicknamed Chi Hansen that cost four hundred dollars and even the Wingle all gone! All gone! Now, I think the Ruby guy got um, every version exclusive and uh, the, as well as the one-offs they were assigned, like uh, like Cradley and Armaldo, for example, so it wasn't as big a, a deal as it could have been, but it still hindered um, the things a bit, and that's one of the reasons why they decided to extend uh, the marathon further. But yeah, that was really a shame because they had put so much effort into doing this and the, the Pokemon that were captured on Ruby were, and all the other games for that matter, were ultimately all supposed to go into the, uh, the, the Diamond Cartridge, which was then supposed to be given to, I don't know, whoever won a, a contest, I don't know if it was donations, I didn't really pay attention. So that was sad too because that Wingull and that uh, that Rayquaza were supposed to become collector's items, and yeah, they they were both kapoo, gone before anything could be done with them, which is really a shame. It's it's like it's like having a really old baseball card of some famous player and other, and then you you come home one day to realize your nephew has chewed it and yeah it's you, you get the idea I, I i really feel sad for the guy who ultimately won the diamond cartridge because uh, it just be beyond the, the purpose of you know they were supposed to have every pokemon on there it's still gonna miss the, the perhaps the two most important pieces of the puzzle just because of a corrupted file and that is really a shame